Joined on the phone today by Andy Zachs. He's the producer behind Woodstock, Back to the Garden, the uh, definitive 50th anniversary archive that's available on Rhino Records. Hey, Andy, how's it going today? Hey, Dustin, how are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excellent. It's great to be speaking with you, and uh, I'm excited about this uh, this Woodstock Back to the Garden set. Can you tell the listeners a bit about it? This box set is humongous. Sure. Well, we have we have done something that that is really improbable and almost unthinkable, which is we have managed after a very long series of years to restore all of the audio uh, from all three days of Woodstock and piece it together so you, it can actually be heard as as a you know a sort of a, a gigantic uh, uh, you know sound piece that that lasts for a day and a half um, containing all thirty two sets. Well, and I just read this morning uh, the uh, the big definitive box set here already sold out, but uh, will it be made available maybe uh, digitally for people out there? I'm not sure. I think there, it, that's certainly under discussion. Um, it's just the, 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 as you might imagine, the size of it um, makes it very uh, makes it a very challenging thing to try to sell digitally, just because it's so huge. So if they can figure out if they can figure out a way to deliver that properly. Um, I would hope that you might you might see a release like that uh, in the next month or two. Uh, my fingers are certainly crossed myself because um, I'd, I'd I'd like more people to be able to hear it. Well, there is a uh, ten disc version and a three disc version out there for folks uh, who uh, still want to get a little bit of it. So uh, the ten disc version is is thirteen hours long. So that's not exactly um, that 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 ain't nothing. Um, it is less than thirty six hours, but it's also a little more tightly curated, as you might imagine. Um, and it it maybe does have a little bit more focus on 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 high points as opposed to kind of like the 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 big sprawl that is the big box. So, um, but it, it's still it's still meant to be a kind of a, a fairly immersive listening experience. It, it will definitely it's designed to kind of put you right there uh, at the side of the stage, uh, feeling like you're in the middle of this, uh, or at least at least that's my hope anyway. Awesome. Well, I got to ask Andy. Uh, even the the process of putting something like this together. I mean, were all these recordings uh, just kind of in the same place, or where were they all before you got a hold of them? Yeah, the tapes were were basically all together. You know, at the time that the um, in 1970, when they finished, uh, when Michael Wadley finished making his film of Woodstock, um, and they finished working on the the soundtrack record. There's that old three LP set that um, that people uh, of a certain age will certainly remember. Um, yeah, all the tapes were were basically kind of you know put in storage and locked away. And at a certain point, about uh, in about 2005, they'd been stored in New York, and the storage facility where they were was closed. So all the tapes then got shipped across the country to Southern California, where I live, um, and where I first encountered the tapes right after they arrived at the Warner Music tape storage facility in California. Um, I walked in one day, and there was this massive quantity of tape on the shelves, and I, I it took me a few seconds to realize what it was. And once I realized what it was, I was sort of stunned because there was, you know, it was immediately obvious to me that there was so much more to the Woodstock audio than I had ever really given any serious thought to. Um, hours and hours and hours of stuff that nobody had ever, nobody had ever thought about, nobody had ever tried to, uh, to restore, nobody had ever tried to release. Uh, in some cases, there were, there were entire sets by bands that no one had bothered to play back since the instant the bands finished playing their sets on the stage. So, um, you know, it seemed to me that this was, you know, it, it fascinated me just staring at all of this stuff. And I was immediately just kind of filled with this, this, I just, you know, it was just one of those things where you just think I got to do this. Um, somebody needs to do this and, and it's going to be me. I'm going to do this. So, um, fortunately my, my friends at Rhino, uh, agreed with me <laughs> that that would be a good idea. So, um, slowly and fitfully we began working on it. And, um, the end result of all of our work over the years is, uh, is, uh, all of the stuff that we have, that we have done for the 50th anniversary. So, um, there's a happy ending for you. Yeah. It's incredible that it was all still intact and, I mean, you guys were able to clean it up and use kind of new technology to uh, to fix things that were kind of in bad shape and to finally get it all together where it belongs. Yeah, we were able to do that. In some cases, yeah, we we sort of we had to wait for the future to happen so that we could um, so that we could restore a few things properly. Uh, and we were very lucky in that regard. We were able to sort of uh, 
sync up uh, things that, that previously uh, we weren't able to kind of patch in and, and repair. Uh, the engineers at Woodstock had this annoying habit of forgetting to turn people's vocal mics on for the first minute or so of a song, um, which caused us no end of grief over the years, trying to figure out how to, to rescue some of those performances where we had, uh, say, a soundboard tape of the vocal uh, that was not on the multi-tracks that we were mixing everything from. Um, it seems like it ought to be a simple idea to get the vocal from one source to another source, but, but in practice, doing that uh, is actually really difficult because the, the various machines all run at microscopically different speeds, so you can't really align them with any degree of ease, or at least you, you couldn't until really just in the last year or so, somebody finally was able to develop some, some software that allowed us to, to perfectly synchronize and, and restore all of this stuff. So that's been pretty thrilling, uh, uh, you know, these sort of like bleeding edge technology things that have allowed us to, to rescue some very old music. So I, I did see that there was uh, maybe just a handful of tracks that actually weren't salvageable, but do you think uh, technology maybe in the future will, will make that possible to fix some of this stuff? Possible, although you know the, um, the the biggest problem in terms of things that we weren't able to work with is there's a there's one Sean on our song that I don't think was actually recorded. So um, all of the all of the exciting new technology in the world probably can't can't you know kind of create that recording for us out of thin air. I wish it could. Um, and there are a few things that we we did our best with um, that that. The current state of some of those restorative technologies isn't quite where we need it to be for certain things. So there are, there are a couple bits and pieces that do sound a little bit rough. Um, you know, I think about the, the performance by Melanie, um, which is a great, really strong performance. Um, it's just that the only surviving tape of the performance is a not terrific sounding mono soundboard tape. Um, and it's noisy enough that, that it, it didn't allow us to do uh, what we were able to do with certain other performances in terms of, in terms of improving them a bit. So uh, we did what we could. Um, I'm, I'm, very, uh, I'm kind of a stickler for not harming anything. Um, I'm, I really want these things to be presented as accurately as possible. So uh, we've done our best with it, but, but if you hear it, you will still hear some, some rough edges. Um, but, you know, in five years, uh, there, there may be technology that, that allows us to completely revise and, and improve that, that, uh, that performance. We just don't have it now. So there's something to look forward to. Well, either way, uh, Woodstock, Back to the Garden, I mean, such a historical event, obviously, so the fact that um, it exists at all is wonderful. And, you know, Andy, I love that you also have recordings, uh, a lot of the crowd and, and the stage hands and just kind of random stuff that the mics were picking up over that festival. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's some of my favorite stuff. And that stuff is, you know, that stuff is really important. That's part of the, it's part of the texture of the event. That's how you know that you're, you're actually listening to Woodstock. Because it's so, it's so instantly, you know, it, 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 it so defines what you're hearing. You know, you hear that stuff and you immediately know where you are and when you are and what you're hearing. So, so no, I take that stuff very, very seriously. That is, so every, every surviving bit of audio like that that we could restore, all of the, the hours of stage announcements that still exist, uh, we, we have incorporated. Um, no, that stuff is that that stuff is a big part of the historical record of this, and you really need to. That really helps kind of put everything in its in its context. So yeah, no, I'm 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 uh, I, I like that stuff just as much as I like the music. Well, and the whole set here is in uh, chronological order. You know, as you mentioned, a lot of people who remember the film or the soundtrack uh, back in the day, uh, a lot of the bands that played there weren't represented at all. So this is a. Uh, definitely a new experience uh, for uh, for most people unless you were actually there at the festival when it happened yeah i mean even the the, the 10 cd set is really sort of the first compilation that actually includes performances by everybody um it took 50 years uh, even for that to happen so i'm that that excites me just being able to have um to have a reasonable selection of of, of all of it it really does give you a much more accurate flavor and texture of this event um, than than previous packages that just sort of that just kind of cherry picked through things or that simply recycled songs that have been in the movie. Um, this is definitely this is definitely a very different uh, it's a very different kind of Woodstock experience. 
And again, uh, Woodstock Back to the Garden, it's available through Rhino Records. Uh, what's coming up next for you, Andy? Is there something else you're working on that maybe we should be looking um, out for? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch up on some lost sleep uh, for a couple <laughs> of months. And then, yeah, I have, um, uh, there's, a, there's a project or two. I can't really talk about them yet, but, um, but I, I, you know, working on Woodstock has taught me I like things with a broad scope. Um, so I suspect most of my efforts, uh, in the next few years are going to be, uh, in the direction of things that have a similar heft and scale to them, I, I think. Um, I think that's, that's probably where I can do the most good in the universe with this kind of stuff. So, um, I'm, I'm kind of raring to go on some stuff. It'll be exciting, I think. Yeah, definitely. I hope to maybe speak with you whenever that comes up down the road. And, and again, uh, this I'd love is, it. That'd be great. Yeah, this is fascinating that uh, all this stuff exists, and now it's uh, in the hands of the public. So, again, thank you so much for your work and uh, for your time today. Sure. Uh, my pleasure. Take care. Thanks. And again, that was Andy Zachs, the producer of Woodstock Back to the Garden, the definitive 50th anniversary archive. There's a uh, big box set. There's also a 10-disc set, a 3-disc set. Stuff that's uh, never been heard before. The entire Woodstock Festival now is finally available. And again, that's from Rhino Records.